Welcome to our Mobilizing Leadership production of Living Leadership. This series works from the premise that leadership is not a title, but a mindset. Filmed in one take, it explores how people navigate beyond the status quo and captures their insights on what leadership looks like across their work, life, and community. The Discovery Whiteboard session is facilitated by Stuart Morse, and we welcome our guest. Welcome to another Living Leadership Dialogue, and today we'd, uh, we're here with uh, Jonathan Hoffman. Jonathan, introduce yourself. Hi, Stu. My name is Jonathan Hoffman. Uh, currently, I'm the Director of Safety at Span Construction and Engineering. Um, I've been doing safety for a long time, approximately 15 years in a lot of different industries. Okay. Uh, very fulfilling job, and I love it. It's, it's very great. good. So, Jonathan, um, you know, when we think about the premise that um, leadership is less you know, it can be a title, but it's less about a title, but more about a mindset that everybody can, can embrace. How does that show up for you across work, life, and community for you? You know, it's a really interesting question. I mean, <clears throat> when it comes to leadership, it's such a dynamic and fluid topic, you know, but I've had the opportunity to witness leadership moments exhibited by others in positions where, you know, title, and position wasn't a factor. Okay. You know, and I, I, I feel like, you know, yes, it, it can be associated with title and positional power in organizations, but every person has what it takes to be a leader. Okay. They just have to know how to unlock that part of themselves. Okay. So they need to know how to unlock it. Yes, sir. So what is, what is a key, what's a key element of that? I mean, you say, hey, we've got, a, everybody has this ability to unlock it. What, what, walk me through that. I mean, what's kind of a starting point that, for people to to start to unlock it, I think you know it's it, it's circumstantial. It's it's very situational. So I, I think by you know unlocking the the leadership to to drive a topic home, you know it, it involves a, a a greater understanding, okay, of you know where this topic may evolve to. Right, you're talking you know situational awareness. So you said thing. understanding of the topic, mm -hmm. but then also. And um, you said situational awareness, mean that lives around the topic or? Yes, absolutely. So okay. when it comes to situational awareness, and I think it's important that I explain my perspective sure. behind it, you know, um, situational awareness is how things are currently impacting your environment. But I like to take that one step further. And I like to think about that in the past tense, the present tense, and future tense. Okay, past, present, future, all right. And just walk me through that, please. Yeah, so let's say uh, we have a, a safety issue on site, for example. Um, let's say it's, it, it's gone unresolved for, you know, two days. So you have the opportunity to travel across all three of these tenses, right? Okay. So when you showed up uh, day one, maybe there were open holes in the floor, right? And you just got there as a company, right? So at that point, in past tense, it would have been somebody else's responsibility. But now here we are, present tense. Whose responsibility is it to um, protect the job site, protect the employees? Um, you know, once you once you move into present tense, responsibility shift. Okay, so what I'm okay. Well, keep going, I'll, and I'll let me let you go ahead and finish out. Yeah, fair enough. So um, once you carry it into present tense, you have construction workers on site, right? But. Potentially, it could be a future problem as well. You know, what does that look like for the client? What does that look like for their employees on a job site? Okay. So what I'm hearing you say is almost like this scope across time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I'm hearing you say is, okay, we got this topic, but then we need to understand this, this scope across time, the situational awareness of, of what lives with it. I'm hearing that that... that is it those aspects is as you were describing that are you describing ownership or is, or or what <clears throat> elements of of this situational awareness across time are you are you thinking about in that yeah so this was a a, a brief safety concern example so this is going to be all about ownership responsibility and abatement right okay but once you carry that into other topics right would ownership yeah. carry over in other topics do you think absolutely okay you know, you carry that into something like freight, supply chain, 
you can quickly see how once you cross-reference uh, an idea with how it spans across time, you can begin to dissect it and problem solve in a more proactive manner. Um, but ultimately, you know, as I think about it, you know, how do you lead through a situation such as that if you can't understand this particular portion? Like how, what's the greater effect of a problem or, you know, maybe it's not even a problem. Maybe we're communicating something beneficial. So a word that comes to mind when you talk about this is context, you know, that, Absolutely. that, that this idea, would that be fair to say what you're really trying to understand is that is the, the overall context of, around this? Absolutely. Would that be another word for situational awareness or you think that, I think where it, did you put it? I think it's synonymous in this circumstance. Okay, okay so let's say you start, you, you, you do this and now what? I mean, well, you, 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 you come in and you got this topic, you're looking for your situational awareness, you're looking mm -hmm. across time, now, now what? Well, now, once you have all this packed together, you have a, um, you've kind of framed up your problem. You can articulate around the environment surrounding said problem. And that can unlock even the frontline employee to be able to express this like it should from a position of leadership. Like, this is going to cause us problems in the future. I see it coming. So, so someone else can, once you get that, they can express it. They can actually... But what I hear you say is that, that now an individual can, and I, and I wanted to just hit pause there for a second because you, you said this, okay, now someone can express this thing. Mm -hmm. Is it so, would it, would it be fair to say that there, it may, there may be a lot of complexities going on? So I, I hear you yeah. embracing that or honoring that there's complexity around a lot of these things. And if you go in here and do this, you can frame it now someone can can talk about it, can Absolutely. actually have a structured conversation about it. Yes, 100%. I mean, once you frame it and you're able to express it, you can take, you know, the issue and now make it, you know, actionable. Okay. Which is very important. So by this, that can move, that can move to actions. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what other, what else happens when you were, you know, you were moving down the thread of, of you know, okay, you frame it, someone can express it. What else do you get from framing it? Well, you, you develop your, your leadership skills and you begin to understand more subtle contexts between what you do and what is happening in reality. And I think that helps most people <clears throat> who are desiring to take the leadership path continue to grow their skill set and expand their understanding. I did that wrong. But, okay, so... So what I'm hearing is by, by taking this time mm -hmm. to frame it, you know, uh, this I, I hear you say, hey, embrace the complexity of it, but you've got to distill it down so you can frame it, so you yep. can both express it, but you can also understand how you're going to lead against it. Correct. And then, okay, what skills do I need? But then also what subtle context. So it's mm -hmm. almost like this large context allows you to create that you can bring down and to connect my skills to subtle context. Is that, did I frame that correctly? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, in this, <clears throat> the subtle context part is probably, at least in my experience, one of the more difficult skills to master around this process. Okay. Because you have to have intricate knowledge of the person you're talking with. You know, what is, what part of this context is going to be their motivator, so to speak? Right, because as leaders, we're trying, to des we're trying to drive desired outcomes. We're trying to remedy situations. We're trying to make situations better. Um, and ultimately, it's the individual knowledge that a person contains about the other individual <clears throat> where you're going to be able to target that internal motivation. Um, so let's say this, this so is a problem. So it sounds like you're speaking about culture, about that. I mean, not culture. It yeah. could be culture in a big context, but really mm -hmm. about the individuals who are who are connected to all this, right? And, yes. and what is, what's their specific, would you say perspective or, I mean, nuances, yeah. right? Of, of the people who are, are connected to it. That's very true. I mean, you know, one thing that, you know, comes to mind is like, let's say this is a, you know, there was a critical fault somewhere and you have this big right. circle of responsibility around something. 
How do you have open dialogue with somebody around something without putting them on the defensive measure to you know, stay engaged with a reasoning half of the brain and not instantly be put off? And I feel like this process is the ticket to that success. So you're allowing them to be, the, well, I guess you're coming back to this ownership thing, but mm -hmm. you're also allowing them to, you're, you're, what I'm hearing you say is you're, you're, well, you're allowing them to express it. You're pulling them into it. Correct. And they can, they can be part of it. So someone can, can be part of it. Mm -hmm. so, so it's almost like this interplay, you know, between ownership and, you know, situational awareness and framing up the problem that it's not just a one-way street, but that we're always collectively checking back in to make sure that, you know, the, the leadership topic. So this thing is, sport. this thing is kind of <clears throat> cyclical. Yes. Well, maybe I drew that the wrong way, but, um, I don't know why I went that way, but but it's this, it's got this cyclical feel to it. Mm -hmm. So what? Okay, let's say you get someone in this idea part of it. You know, this is coming into a situation. What happens by doing this? Are you is are you? How's this linked to the leadership mindset tied to this process? I mean, so I. <clears throat> what happens is, is when you frame it like this and you make it about processes and systems and it's not about the person, you then can take that human and we're going along on a journey together as thought partners in, you know, this uh, leadership exercise or problem shooting exercise. And so is, are you, in, um, what I'm hearing you say, are you, in, are you enabling kind of a leadership would it be fair to yes. say you're enabling a leadership mindset in the people who are being engaged in this process in kind of a systems understanding? Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. And, you know, <clears throat> I think the important part is, is that you're able to isolate the error or uh, topic of discussion away from the human so that they feel protected to actually want to go there with you. You know, maybe so, this. So you're creating a safe place for them? Yes. A place of safety? safe place for them yep okay so when, when you're moving through this I want to now go to you know as an as an individual someone's let's say someone has learned this or either you're doing it or as, as they're moving through this to get to this place where someone can feel part of it and they can feel and there's a, it's a safe place to be part of it what are you watching in yourself um, so you know you, you don't want to you don't want to be over passionate about something, right? That could be off-putting. You want to try okay. and maintain equilibrium through the conversation. Okay, so you want an equilibrium. Yes. In your in yourself. Hopefully, I spelled that right. <laughs> Do I get that right? It looks right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so you're looking. You're wanting to make sure you're staying in equilibrium. Yes. Um, what else? What else are you are you aware of or, or being self-conscious about? So um, emotions are very telling. Okay. Um, you know, when it comes to human communication, the truest form of communication is body language. Okay. You know, so you have to be very self-aware. You have to have mastered self in order to um, engage others, because <clears throat> the one stick that could break all of this is the human interaction portion. Like if you have pushed somebody- So you have, you have to have a foundation. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down here if I may. Go, if, that there's this human interaction that you've gotta have as this foundational piece, correct? Yes. Okay, and go ahead, finish your thought. Uh, why, is, why, why, why do you say that? Because as uh, humans, we're, we're interesting creatures in the way that we have you know, cognitive biases, reasoning biases, and being put on the defensive or approaching a situation aggressively is a really good way to take people in the opposite direction that you want to take them in. You know? so the human or that the scenario, if you're not watching for that, it could go there. You could lose, you could lose yes. control of the situation. You could. Or it could, could it actually also really go in a place where you didn't want it to go. That's also a critical flaw, you know what I mean? You have to constantly remain in touch with the situation, constantly gauge, gauging it and measuring it. Um, <clears throat> what about your own biases? What about? Absolutely, you have okay. to know your trigger points. Okay. 
explain that a little bit. What do you mean by that, trigger points? So, um, <clears throat> let's say you work in the strategic planning department of a company and you've been trying to push an idea for four years and it's finally gaining traction. Right. You know, maybe the person who developed said plan, you know, feels a little sensitive to its reception, whatever the case may be, right? You know, it's, it's important that you <clears throat> are able to continue to move forward as a leader. You know what I mean? Don't get stuck in the past. Continue to progress the things that, you know, you have to progress and, you know, the things that you would like to also see others progress in. So it's always about having patience, humility, um, and, and being able to navigate that subtleness of human interaction and human behavior. So just by you saying that, it made me come back to this, but of this in related to self. Yes. So that while you're doing this same system around past, present, future that you put it here, you're also maybe watching your own your own thought process, I mean, a lot of this in regards to this. Oh, would absolutely. That, would that be fair to say? Yeah, because when it comes to self and leadership moments, <clears throat> it, is, it is easy to derail a conversation if you do not understand your audience or whom you're talking to. Right. So if you don't have mastery of self, you can completely take a conversation and flip it unintentionally by not knowing the, you know, the subtle human behaviors uh, that could trigger somebody or, you know, watching out for their behaviors that could trigger you. So when you, um, is there anything else that you would add to this that you think that we're, we haven't captured? Um, <clears throat> well, if anything, I feel like we need to highlight this, uh, okay. you know, and, and kind of expand upon that because the human is ultimately, you know, what are we trying to lead? You have to understand that it's 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 very key to success. So this almost is this is this thing that you're being aware of, but it's also this thing you're constantly checking against. It's, it's, it's. Is there is there specifics you you want to note down here, or just highlight that hey, this is not just foundational, but it's, it's well, I mean, a key there's, aspect. There, there's there's a lot of stuff that we could put in that box. I mean, respect is obviously key. I mean, there right. are characteristics and attributes associated with that. Right. Uh, category in that box right there but you know you you have the respect you have trust you know all of these things uh, help to compound on the uh, process above right okay if, if you have these things then you already can walk into a situation understanding certain things right and that is the human <clears throat> very good well thank you Jonathan thank you very much oh well, thank you Stuart very interesting all right Thank you. Thank you to our guests and the Sprint Ahead Mobilizing Leadership people who are collectively working to create leadership for all through shared purpose, connected communities, new opportunities to learn, and action-based leadership experiences. We look forward to hearing your insights. Please connect and move forward with us.